West Coast earthquake warnings, mega quakes, and 100 foot tsunami inevitable for the US West Coast. Experts warn Sean Martin Express UK massive earthquakes, powerful tsunamis accompanying these earthquakes. The earthquake tsunamis, that is, will devastate the northwest of the U.S. and it will send cities sliding towards the ocean. This is what the experts have warned of. We're expecting major earthquakes, mega thrust earthquakes. West Coast of the United States, described as being built on a time bomb, quote unquote, it's sitting along a series of fragile fault zones, which include the San Andreas Fault and the Cascadia Subduction Zone. It's a matter of time before the Cascadia Zone on the Pacific Ring of Fire snaps, unleashing quakes which could measure up to 9 on the Richter scale, 9 magnitude, as we had a couple of years before in Japan, accompanied by similar monstrous tsunamis, according to the experts. The Cascadia subduction zone generates huge quakes every 200 to 530 years, and the last one was in the year 1700. Experts believe it's now just a matter of time before the next disaster strikes in the Cascadia subduction zone on the north of the west coast. Now recently, geologists have found that this area snaps every 300 years, not 500 years as they previously thought. From the sedimentary research that they've done, they found that it happens every 300 years. The last time of the mega quake and tsunami was the year 1700 that sent a ghost tsunami towards Japan, and we're now past that period. Experts believe it's a matter of time. Oregon State University paleoseismologist Chris Goldfinger says it'll spread from Canada to California over 800 miles. He says the whole Pacific Northwest is very fragile, extremely fragile. Essentially, our cities are turn-of-the-century cities built on a time bomb. And then Matt Caesar, the region's FEMA headquarters, in Washington also said that when this happens, buildings will start to crumble. As we said in one of our previous videos, most of these buildings will not last, will not be able to stand over a seven magnitude earthquake. Besides the fact that a lot of the ground structure will not be able to hold anything even of a seven, seven magnitude because there will be some type of a liquefaction going on. Now, Matt Caesar said when the skyscrapers start swaying, a lot of them are designed to have their windows pop out. There'll be three feet of broken glass on the roads underneath those buildings in downtown Seattle, three feet of glass, and we don't even see three feet of snow. It's perhaps the most shocking is that when the quake does happen, the entire region will slide some 30 feet towards the Pacific Ocean, is what he says. That's astonishing. We just recently saw a slide of 13 feet in the Ridgecrest area after the 7.1 magnitude quake. If you watch one of the videos before this one, 13 feet of permanent movement. 30 feet will take place in the Pacific Ocean in this region. And if that alone does not destroy everything on the West Coast, the resulting tsunami could realistically be up to 100 feet high, and that can finish the job, according to Dr. Goldfinger, who said, and then suddenly you've got a bay full of fishing boats, refrigerators, cars, and everything else, just like what we saw in Japan happening. It's like the glacier of debris that's just kind of sloshing back and forth. Now the difference between Cascadia and San Andreas is that the former is a subduction zone where plates lie on top of each other, whereas the latter, say, they sit uh, sits diagonally. The result subduction zone faults can cause much more damage 
one plate literally drops off of the other. Now, planning manager of Seaside, Oregon, Kevin Couples warned, there's not much that can be done to prepare for an inevitable tragedy. He said, someday it's going to happen. That could be in 15 minutes from now or years down the road. And Dr. Goldfinger said, we could literally have it right now and we'd be looking around saying, okay, I guess this is it. Now, this article was uh, from last year. The cup, not last, well, last fall, actually, before all these small quake swarms started. Remember, we, they started around um, Salton Sea and uh, the Pisgah Crater, and uh, we had a few of them just basically around uh, the north of Ridgecrest area, and we noticed these uh, quake swarms popping up everywhere around there. And then what happened was, of course, I'm going to tie in the total solar eclipse, what happened, which happened July 2nd. July 3rd, we had the 6.2 Cascadia quake off Vancouver Island. 13 hours later, we had the 6.4 in Ridgecrest. And a day later, we had the 7.1 in Ridgecrest on July 5th. And we've had over 80,000 aftershocks in that area. We've had, we have inflation, uh, which basically should be taking place when you have uh, some kind of a um, quake that we have, a sliding quake that we've had in the area. But of course, we're talking about an area where we have the Kosovo Volcanic Field, which is also a volcanic area, which has a magma chamber underneath. That's where they have the geothermal plant there, one of the biggest in the, in the country. So we do have the magma chamber there. We do have a rising of the uh, ground. Cracking, fissures, rising of the ground in a volcanic field. We have the Walker Lane fault system, which no geologist has mentioned yet. They took two days to mention the fact that these earthquakes were in the Kosovo volcanic field, and they did mention it two days later. Monitoring the earthquakes. But no one is talking about the Walker Lane fault system, which is locked into the Garlic Fault, which is the second largest fault in California after San Andreas. San Andreas is zipper locked with the Garlic Fault. To the east of the Garlic Fault, right near Ridgecrest, of course, is the Walker Lane Fault. And those are the faults that have been moving with the 6.4 and the 7.1, giving us those earthquakes. That area basically goes up northwest towards the Cascadia Arc and it's locked into the Cascadia Arc, pushing northwest, pushing north. That's why the Vancouver earthquake of July 3rd, 13 hours of 6.2 magnitude, gave us an earthquake at Ridgecrest of 6.4, 13 hours later. And that happened, as we said many times, in 2015, again in the summer, 6.2 magnitude off north of Vancouver Island, 24 hours later, gave a moderate earthquake in Ridgecrest. That's because that whole system is locked together. And it's locked by the Walker Lane Fault that pushes towards the Cascadia Arc. That whole area is uh, locked in with its pressure. Now, there are many people that have looked into this and say this is worse than uh, any type of an action from a supervolcano. In the middle of all this, uh, across from Fresno, for example, you have the Long Valley Caldera supervolcano. A lot of these quakes are heading towards the north, towards there. The Mano and the Inyo area. And they're on the uh, Owens Valley fault, which is on the Walker Lane fault system. So um, we'll keep an eye on that. 
a lot of people think that uh, perhaps people on the West Coast should be aware that perhaps it's a good time to get out of Dodge, as the saying goes, if you're able to do that. There are a lot of beautiful places in the whole country. The United States is just beautiful. There's a lot of places that may be looking for people uh, that have the talents of people working on the West Coast. Take a look. Maybe you'll be able to help and benefit areas if you want to move somewhere else, if you're thinking of that. Um, just a thought. But um, this is an area of a subduction zone and it's becoming very active. I'm not a geologist, but I have no idea if this has ever happened, having thousands of quakes every day in an area like this, in a subduction zone. And the geologists have warned us that when there's an uptick in earthquakes in a volcanic area, that means that something is happening underground. And when there's a deformation of the ground, in this case we're having an uplift, that's another indication. Another indication is gas emissions. Well, we've had that too. We've had the little bees dying off on the day of the earthquake. Um, others have said that uh, on the day of the 7.1 magnitude, July 5th, they saw the electrical wires turning red as if there was a surge of uh, a lot of electricity going through them. Maybe it had to do with the earthquake frequencies, the electromagnetic frequencies coming out shooting out from the earth before the earthquake, who knows. But there's a lot of indications that there's a lot of uh, uh, signs having to do with uh, a lot of geological, seismic and volcanic activity there. So I'll leave links below for you for this. Thank you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.